Very fine. Okay, well again, good afternoon everybody. Uh, the city of uh, Clearwater, uh, given a, a city of our size, is very innovative. Uh, we have a very good council and uh, higher uh, management group within the city that's forward thinking and always has been. Uh, they work very hard to stay uh, ahead of the curve and to take good care of the, and be good stewards of uh, what we have available within the city. So, the project I want to talk to you about today is Clearwater Groundwater <coughs> Replenishment Project. This project has been um, in, uh, in uh, underway in one way or another since 2008. Um, it was actually part of our integrated water management strategy plan that's been involved, uh, been in place about, since the mid-2000s, where we are trying to conserve our water supplies, preserve our water sources, protect the coastal environment, which is so important to who we are in Clearwater, produce more water locally, and manage the cost of our water. The project statement for the groundwater replenishment project was this. It was to construct a water purification plant at the existing North, uh, Northeast Water Reclamation <coughs> Facility to supply three million gallons a day of highly treated water to recharge the lower zone A of the Florida aquifer to allow the city to reliably supply all the high quality water demanded by our citizens at a reasonable cost. So it's a pretty ambitious project um, and it's designed to meet those goals. Uh, Clearwater has a number of different facilities. We have three wastewater treatment plants, better known as water reclamation facilities today. Um, we have the Northeast facility, Let's see if I can do this without making a mistake. There we go. Up in uh, the north uh, east corner of the city. And we have the Marshall Street facility here, which has been in place since about the 1930s. Um, was a WPA project. And also the East Water Reclamation Facility, which is located right on the uh, causeway as you come into the city of Clearwater. Combined capacity of all of our facilities is approximately 14 million gallons a day. Um, they're currently running between 50 and 70 percent capacity, so we generate somewhere in the neighborhood of about 12 and a half million gallons a day of highly purified uh, effluent from these facilities. Uh, currently, we have a large uh, reuse system and we're able to um, effectively utilize about 6 million gallons a day of that. So we have about 6 million gallons of, of uh, highly purified water that we either discharge um, to Old Tampa Bay or we discharge to Stevenson Creek, which ends up in Clearwater Harbor. We'd like to do something about that, number one. Uh, we have three water treatment facilities. Uh, we have RO1, RO2, and also um, Water Plant 3. RO1 um, is uh, a facility that uh, was put in place uh, because the uh, water in our uh, freshwater wells had gotten to the TDS had risen to the point where they needed to go to RO. RO2 is a different facility altogether. It was uh, put in place and uh, just started in operation this year, or I'm sorry, last year, 2015. Um, it's a brackish water facility. Uh, there was no uh, ability to get additional consumptive use permits for any more fresh water. So in order to meet our water demands, and partially we just developed a, a, a brackish water facility with RO. Water treatment plant three uh, currently is a uh, upper zone A plant pump uh, chlorinate or uh, coraminate and send out to the system, but it also is feeling the pressure. Uh, uh, it's going to have to be upgraded because we're also seeing TDS rises there, and it's, it's a, an issue for us. So that plant is scheduled to be converted to an RO plant here uh, also in the next few years. The, uh, the goals of the project, as I said before, are to somehow give us an opportunity to do all, you know, make all the water that we need for our customers um, and at a reasonable cost. Currently, we have uh, enough capacity for about nine to 10 million gallons a day in all of our facilities. Uh, we, on a, on a year with uh, the highest demand years, we're about 12, 12 and a half million gallons a day of potable water we have to supply. So somewhere between three and three and a half million gallons a day on the peak years, we're having to purchase from Pinellas County. That water is very expensive to us because it's water that uh, they're buying from Tampa Bay Water and then in turn selling to us so it's not exactly the most economical water for us, but it's a necessity and we're surely thankful to have it at the moment. But we'd like to be able to be the master of our own supplies and our own costs. Um, and therefore, the groundwater replenishment project made sense from an economic basis. And I'll go into this later if there's a question, but the estimated cost of water from this facility is gonna be about $4 a thousand. Currently we're paying 392. So 
it's a good, good, uh, good opportunity for the city of Clearwater. That cost is only going to go up uh, from Pinellas County. So uh, for us, it, it works out well. Um, the other benefit, one of the other major benefits from this facility is it's going to allow us to take 3.7 million gallons a day of highly purified water from the wastewater treatment plant and take it uh, and make uh, drink, essentially drinking water out of it and no longer have the discharge from that facility to Old Tampa Bay, which is a real major benefit for us because again, like everyone else in this room, TMDLs are changing and things are changing and where our wastewater systems are getting squeezed as well because of the treatment requirements. I will say this, our plants currently are producing far better than 5531, so we're at that point now, if we have to do any better, that we're gonna to have to do what other folks are talking about, go to far advanced treatment, which would be very expensive. So there's an offset in the costs uh, there as well, which we did not calculate into that $4. So there's major benefits in this project to the city of Clearwater in many different ways. Uh, we were fortunate to bring this forward. Uh, the way it all got started in 2008, our mayor uh, went to a conference out in California and happened to see the facility in, uh, in uh, Los Angeles that I'm sure all of you know about. Uh, walked through and had a tour and came back and asked the director at the time, why aren't we looking at this? Um, quite frankly, I think the director before me was quite surprised that that question was asked. Uh, they had thought of it but didn't think that it was something that the current uh, uh, political folks would be willing to take a good look at in 2008. You can remember back then, things were quite a bit different than they are right now. But they said, well, you know, that's a good question. We'd love to look at it. They did an in-house uh, feasibility analysis, uh, a, a very quick in-house analysis through our own engineering department, and came up with numbers that looked promising. Talked to Swift Mud, talked to DEP. They also thought things looked promising. So therefore, thereafter, we commissioned a uh, large-scale, fully documented uh, feasibility study. And Emily Moore is here today from Tetratech, who headed up that project. Uh, and also, we're passing questions to her later, for so something I don't know. But <laughs> anyway, we did a full-scale feasibility analysis, and that came out very favorable. Uh, Water Management District was impressed, and so were we. Uh, DEP went on, got on board to work with us to uh, look at how this might be implemented. Um, Swift Mud uh, was willing to fund half of the initial um, pilot plant work, which I'll talk about here in a minute. Um, and now we're on board with this to fund half of the treatment facility. We're in, in uh, final design right now. So let me move ahead a little bit. The facility is going to be located at the Northeast uh, Water Reclam Reclamation Facilities located at the corner of McMillan Booth Road and 580, for those of you that know the Clearwater area. Um, the plant is here. It's, uh, this, product, this plant's been uh, here for many years. It was upgraded in the late 70s for Grizzle Fade. It produces a very, very high quality effluent. It currently uh, supplies water um, to a good portion of Clearwater as reclaimed water. But we also bulk sell to back to Pinellas. So Pinellas buys uh, reuse water from us as well. Uh, but we still have about three, three and a half million gallons a day of water that we would like to use more beneficially. And so therefore, the water um, groundwater replenishment facility is going to be located on the same site. This whole project, the project, the property you see here in orange is ours. Um, so um, that's where it's going to be located. Uh, it's going to include, well, initially we're going to include five injection wells, which is what you see here, one, two, three, four, and five. Looks like now we may be looking at four instead of five, but that's not been fully determined yet. Um, there will also be an on-site um, brine or concentrate deep injection well uh, for disposal of what's left. Um, the key thing I think here to note is that all of the injection wells are located on city control property, which made the overall uh, permitting, it's going to make the overall permitting, I think, much, much easier for us to deal with. Um, so far, um, like I said, Water Management District DEP has been part of the process right from the very beginning, so there's no surprises to them. Everybody knows what's going on. The intent of the project is that we will inject into the uh, lower A, um, and uh, as you know, that area, the TDS, at least in the area of Clearwater, is up in the 800 to 1,000 uh, milligrams per liter range. Um, and not in the upper zone A, but the lower zone A, after we inject it, of course, over time will we'll also migrate up into the A. 
the planning horizon to our nearest wells or any wells in the area is about 10 years if you look at the particle model. So that's the intent. Uh, there's the model that shows how the water is going to move from the wells themselves out into the area. The treatment process that we um, have, and we've also, uh, I will say, we've had a full, a large scale pilot plant that we ran for one solid year to demonstrate this facility. It was quite extensive, it was a three, four million dollar project, uh, three point four million dollar project, and uh, literally tens of thousands of analyses that were done uh, during, the, during the pilot stage. So we're taking, oh, oh see, now I'm doing it. We're taking the uh, reclaimed water from the Northeast uh, facility, we're passing it through membrane filtration first, and then on to reverse osmosis, from there to AOP, which is a pretty standard process. Um, the AOP, um, after that though, what is different in our process is that we also have membrane deoxygenation units where we're trying to remove as much of the oxygen, essentially down to zero, that we can, so that the water will be uh, compatible with the uh, strata down below us and reduce any possibility of migration of arsenic and other metals. Um, we're also going to have a polishing stage at the end because the water was really way too pure when it, when it finished the process. So we're going to uh, head back in some bisulfite, uh, again, to make sure we've gotten the rest of the DO out, but we're also going to head back minerals and, and things like calcium and, and stabilize the water. So we, uh, as part of the pilot plant process, uh, we ran the plant for a year, but we also did some core testing uh, where we actually might you know, pass water through cores taken in the, in the production zone uh, to make sure that we had produced the water that wasn't going to cause any migration. So again, we have uh, UF to remove suspended solids, bacteria, cryptosporidium, giardia, and, and so forth. RO uh, to remove organics, pharmaceuticals, and then the rest, as you all know. The AOP, low molecular weight organics like MDMA and, one, uh, and, and other uh, products of that type. Um, the membrane contactors remove dissolved oxygen so we don't have any arsenic mobilization and reduce the pH. And then chemical addition to stabilize the water. The, uh, at the very beginning, at the design of the pilot plant stage and the inception of, you know, what are we going to do? What are we trying to prove? And how are we going to use this data for permitting and for moving the project forward and designing the facility? We looked at the rules, you know, 62600 for domestic wastewater and also 62610. Uh, which are currently the, the rules that we have to deal with. Uh, we looked at all of that. We talked with DEP. Uh, we had extensive discussions with them. We talked with SWIFTMUD. And we decided to do and what we were told we could do was a one-year pilot project based on the criteria you see here. Um, the one last thing we took a look at uh, was also what about pathogenic and mutagenicity. We also did that, which not too many projects in this area have done so far. So we're we looked at uh, mutagenicity as well. Um, we also looked at the only regulations that we had that were really appropriate at the time, and that was the California draft re re regulations for indirect potable reuse and direct potable reuse. And we decided to work with a spike challenge testing for MDMA and 1,4-dioxin, which is what we did. The pilot testing process uh, was what you see here. That's kind of out of perspective, but it was a standalone facility at the Northeast uh, Wastewater or Water Reclamation Facility. It was the full entire process train um, from start to finish. The duration was 12 months. It met FDEP Chapter 62610 requirements and some. Uh, we did over 25,000 different analyses. We had 200 plus constituents we looked at extensively. And we consistently produced a purified water that met or surpassed all the drinking water standards, including those for MDMA and mutagenicity. The testing and modeling, um, we did again this core, we did core testing, I just talked about to make sure that we didn't have any migration. Uh, we did our aquifer recharge testing at the same time to be proving out the wells uh, and that they were in the right locations. And we did hydrochemical uh, modeling as well. We have an extensive public outreach program. The program's actually been in place since the very beginning and inception of the project. We've done um, city council and elected official, um, kept them up to speed all the way through. They are instrumental in this project. They're some of our biggest supporters. Uh, we're very fortunate in that area of forward thinking and they really want to see this project go. So they've been working very well with us. 
Uh, we've that all of our our uh, council meetings are televised, uh, local access, public you know public access channels. So there's been a lot of um, briefings and things that have been done. And so the folks in our city are pretty familiar with what we're doing. We have utility customer communications on our bills and things of that sort. We've been working with for uh, several years. We've been doing homeowners associations, community groups, and service clubs, professional societies like like this. Um, members of our staff have literally talked on this project all over the United States. We're currently on the water reuse. Uh, what is the name of that website? The international site? For all, what is it? Global, Global map. map. And for those of you that are aware of it, you can go through and look at all the major projects of this type around the world. There's little dots. You click on them. And there's videos. They're really quite nice. You need to take a look at it if you haven't seen them. We have a USF graduate seminar work we've done and pilot plant tours, and there's a guy that's driving this thing up here that's pretty familiar to everybody now. Um, so we've all been intimately involved in the public outreach program. We have scheduled a major, now a major program that is in addition to what we've done so far, that's going to take the next year and a half or so. Um, we've hired, or we are hiring um, professionals to work with us to go out on the major, major uh, campaign for our region and uh, education for the folks in our area. All right, so the study really was pretty simple. Um, first question from the, from the politicians when we gave them the feasibility work was, do we do this? And the answer was a resounding yes, we'd like you to continue. We met with the Water Management District and uh, DEP. Uh, they've been great, uh, everybody's been very supportive. Uh, we did the bench pilot field investigations. At that point, the decision was made, do we go or do we don't, or do we don't, or it make sense. Did we, do we go or don't we? And the answer again was yes. So just uh, last month, we've uh, executed an agreement with the Southwest Florida Water Management District, who are funding half of this $28.5 million project. And we are moving ahead, and Tetra Tech is in the process of final design. We hope to have this facility operational in sometime in 2018. So, I'm going to move back there and get ready for the questions. <laughs>